This week, the ABC has been travelling throughout the Murray-Darling Basin, finding out how communities are faring. The Basin Plan, which is designed to improve the health of Australia's biggest river system, has been in place for five years. We've heard from irrigators and farmers about how the system is managed, and now let's hear from two scientists who are studying the basin's ecology. Professor Nick Bond is the director of the Murray-Darling Freshwater Research Centre, based in Albury, and Ben Gorn works at the centre too, with a particular interest in the influence of water flow on ecological processes in rivers and wetlands, as well as native, native fish habitats. Sabra Lane spoke to them earlier and they were in our Aubrey Wodonga studio. Nick Bond, has the Wentworth Group of Scientists been too quick to make a judgement on the health of the system? I mean, it's taken decades for it to be degraded. Surely it can't be fixed in five years. It is probably safe to say that in terms of having the data to really... Um understand the extent to which health's been improved by river management and, and increased environmental flows is something that is going to take um, some time to, to fully understand. And Ben Gorn, what's happened to the fish life in the river system? What's happened to the Murray Cod and Murray Perch? Well, I mean, over the long term, there's been declines, which is part of the reason for the basin plan, but environmental flows have been used now to um, try and stimulate breeding events, and that's been successful for both, um, well, at least for golden perch, who are triggered by um, flow spawning. But as Nick has said, it's a long. The basin plan is a long-term um, program, and what they're now trying to work out is how we can maximise the survival of those fish that have been encouraged to breed to um, grow up and, and recruit to the adult population. And the success of that will actually become mer- emerge over the coming years. So while there's been initial success with the breeding, we're not sure about what the long-term impact on that will be on the population. Have you seen any spikes in population in Murray Cod, for example, in in particular areas on the river? So the populations of native fish do seem to have responded to the wet conditions that we had five years ago. So there have been dramatic recruitment events through the population as a result of some of those big natural floods. If that turns out to be the case over the long term, then it'll mean that the role of environmental flows will be to sustain those populations between those big breeding events that are um, caused by natural flooding. Nick Bond, an old producer in Griffith, told us he thinks the problem is that the Murray and Darling systems are treated like big irrigation channels, really, and he says that there's been a build-up of silt and material and that plants and animals are struggling to adapt. Is there anything in that theory of his? Yeah, look, there's, there's, there's probably a number of elements that are there. One is in terms of the seasonal pattern of, of irrigation flows, obviously, uh, in, in many of the rivers, particularly in the southern basin, the, the flow regime, the seasonality has been somewhat reversed. So we have these unnaturally high flows during the summer period and that often coincides also with those, those flows being quite cold. So the use of the, the river system um, to supply irrigation flows has, has a, a major effect on the seasonality of, of flows. The other element around increased sedimentation and what have you is is another issue which it's pleasing to see coming back onto the agenda. I guess the the Water Act and the Basin Plan very intentionally isolated the the management and addressing water as a single issue independently from some of the broader catchment management issues. I think we're now starting to see a dialogue emerge, recognising that we need to be simultaneously addressing both issues of river flows and river hydrology together with catchment management and management of water quality and nutrient and sediment inputs. And Ben Gorn, what can you tell us about the health of the river based on how well or poorly some animals are faring? (laughs) <laughs> well, that's part of the reason that the Basin Plan is such a complex initiative is that there are hundreds of species um, of plants and um, you know, tens of species of native fish that, that the Basin Plan is designed to try and protect or restore. And in some cases, there are success stories. In other cases, um, we're sort of exploring the limits of what environmental flows can achieve. So it's kind of hard to give you an overall snapshot, but that's partly what the Murray-Darling Basin Authority is currently doing. They are undertaking an evaluation of the implementation of the Basin Plan by going around and interviewing people to record their observations of where things have got to. But that's a major challenge for the Basin Authority is to document how successful they've been. But we know that there are successes in terms of promoting bird breeding events, sustaining frog populations, those types of things throughout the Basin. And so there are success stories out there, but whether you know the, the Basin Plan as a whole will succeed is something that will emerge over the, the coming decade. Professor Nick Bond from the Murray-Darling Freshwater Research Centre and before him, researcher Ben Gorn. They were speaking.